What is up, YouTube.com? It's your boy, John McGarrett. So, another episode of How to Grow Wealth. I'm going to read Proverbs and translate it for you guys, uh, interpret it, explain it to you how it's going to make you money. And that is the goal of this series. So, I don't want to waste any more time. So, let's just hop right into the video. Today, we are on um, Proverbs 5, and its title is Warning Against Adultery. So, now I feel like this is already going to cause triggering. Triggered, 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 triggered. Um, Adultery is bad. Uh, adultery defined, I'm pretty sure, biblically is uh, any sex outside of a marriage or whatever you can say, a civil union or whatever you want. But I mean, I guess whatever. Uh, that is a completely different conversation, but any sex outside of a marriage. So it's any. So uh, here's the warnings against that. My son, pay attention to my wisdom. Turn your ear to my words of insight that you may maintain discretion and your lips may per preserve knowledge for the lips of the adulterous woman drip honey honey and her speech is smoother than oil but in the end she's bitter as gall sharp as a two-edged sword her feet go down to death her steps lead straight to the grave she gives no thought to the way of life her paths wander aimlessly but she does not know it so this is kind of uh, a couple things speaking figuratively and it's speaking literally on a couple points here so when it's describing a woman here or it could be anybody who's adulterous. This doesn't have to be a woman, but it's just the what the the words he chose. Um, maybe adulterous women are a lot more um, sweet, which that would make sense. Uh, women probably are a lot more sweet than men, just in general. So that might be that, but that, that's not. I, I feel like that's not an important point here. The uh, overall encompassing uh, message that this is trying to say is that uh, adultery. It. So, okay, okay, this is one. This is a, this is good. Okay, so adultery, the reason why adultery is bad and why he's pointing this out is this is essentially uh, equal to chasing tail. I mean, if you ever heard that, like the dudes chase tail and then, you know, they want to sow their wild oats or whatever the crap they're saying. And, um, every, you know, everybody in some way does it, you know, they pursue women or whatever. But anybody who does that, um, how many of them, like, in their pursuit of women, grow wealth this i guess think about that i mean ones you know personally i'm not talking about ones that you see on the internet pretend that they have stuff for people who at the end of their monetary um gain then decide to blow it all on women i'm not talking about that i'm talking about in the pursuit of wealth who don't have wealth how many people um like at your job maybe who are, spend time hitting on all the girls how much work are they actually getting done um so that's the main argument um, I would put forth why uh, it's bad, but the reason why it is, it's not, if you're, if you're trying to get a girlfriend or get a wife or whatever, so you talk to a lot of girls or whatever, that's one thing and shit like that. That's not what I'm saying, but, um, to pursue the adulterous woman, adulterous meaning in this context then, um, is like. In this context, this is, I'm struggling to say this because this is going to push back against a lot of the culture today, but uh, adulterous, adultery, uh, outside, equal sex, outside of marriage, and again, okay, outside of a monogamous relationship. How's, how's that? That, I think, is, um, is a better way. Sex outside of a mono um, context because... You know, I feel like this this may not be as biblical or whatever, but I feel like it still kind of is enough that it's it may it, it won't turn away um, materialism or you know whatever. Just in, just today's culture, this I think is what is actually being said too. Because okay, let me talk about that real quick. Uh, marriage, in my opinion, and I could be wrong about this. Uh, I don't think the government has any business in marriage. That whether you're gay or straight or anything like that. I think government has no business dictating marriage. I don't think they should have anything dictating divorces or anything like that or have any say about who's getting what. When it comes down to children, because it, it that feels like a civil issue um, between, you know, a part of the basic human condition. But marriage is a fundamental um, religious concept. Um, now, there's legal ways to describe, like, co-inhabitants inside of a, a house or whatever and stuff like that like head of household and stuff like that and there's a way that there's like legally you can um syntax i don't know if that's the right word uh, if you you can talk about the language you could talk about the legal language to describe other types of relationships due to tax purposes and stuff like that but marriage fundamentally um like especially in my case is a christian completely religious 
practice and it has nothing to do with the government it has nothing to do with the state in my opinion so that's why i say mono uh, relationship here because i believed myself to be married to um my girlfriend because the biblical um definition is that when you leave your there's there's a set of actions you and this is there's a set of actions you employ to become married and none of them say to get a priest's written approval from the state to then ma become married. Um, there's like a set of actions and there's like a bunch of things throughout the Bible, like quotes and stuff, like one saying that like once you sleep with a, a, uh, with a prostitute, you become one flesh, stuff like that. So, I mean, if you're becoming one flesh in a way, you are becoming married to those people. So, I mean, yeah. Um, that's a completely different uh, conversation, but that's why I feel like the mono context here applies. So adultery in that context means sex outside of any mono context. Um, so in this context, why it is such a problem and why I feel and this, I'm open to being wrong, but I'm pretty sure I'm not, I'm not, but the re the, the main, the core reason it's bad is it is nothing more than a drug habit. Um, so if you're chasing women and you're having uh, casual interactions with women on a, um, or the other way around or whatever, just having casual, and this, this goes to like, get, this is anybody, any like gay sex or any sex or any sex just at all, just for the terms of pleasure. It's, it's nothing more than a biological like drug. Like you're, you're hijacking your own and the same goes for masturbation. Masturbation would be, I feel the worst out of everything when it comes down to, um, destructive behaviors because it's drugs so i mean like you could say like a little bit of sex isn't that bad or something like that you know a casual hookup here and there isn't that bad but then in the same vein you could say a little bit of fentanyl isn't that bad or a little bit of crack isn't that bad or a little bit of heroin isn't that bad or a little bit of methamphetamine isn't that bad which you know um those things all have proper uses and those drugs all actually can be probably used therapeutically in some instances, because a lot of those drugs do show up in the med medical field. Um, and then also then I would say sex shows up in the medical field too, um, as not the medical, medical field, but in religion, that's why Christianity puts it in between one person and another person, because then when you have that unity between those two people, you are, um, you're pretty much like you are deploying a drug. So, like, whenever you have sex with your partner, you are wiring your brain that this 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 person is giving you a massive amount of dopamine. So then when the times get hard, biologically, your lizard brain has that massive amount of dopamine to look back to. But if you have sex with everybody and then, you know, fry your brain like meth heads do, um, then you're not going to have any type of closeness with anybody because you've uh, hijacked your own um, biology to create a crazy high okay so yeah i can't believe i just said all that i'm gonna put that on the internet right now but uh that's what i think that's what i believe and i'm pretty sure i'm more right than i'm wrong about that so uh we're just going to continue forward that being said the reason the core reason adultery is bad is because it is a drug your drug my favorite thing i hear from people uh who say that i don't do drugs um like what's that comedian's name chris Dilla. He said that he'd never done drugs in his life because he sees what he does with it or what it does to people. But then he got in a lot of trouble because he was inviting 18-year-old uh, girls over to his house everywhere he'd go and he would have sex with a lot of women. And then I just kind of facepalm a little bit because it's like oh, you're saying you're not a drug addict, but then you pursue in drug addict behavior. But he got in a lot of trouble for that or whatever. That doesn't matter if he got in trouble or not. But I'm just saying he is – it's hypocritical. Anybody, anytime anybody says, I don't do drugs, but I – have sex with women that's all i'm saying here but okay so that's a big side note but hopping back in with that context i think it's going to make this adultery this warning against adultery make more sense because i think honestly it is warning against adultery because it is like a drug habit and uh, i'm sure if anybody actually is honest about this concept or to uh, topic that they're they'd probably in some way more agree with me than disagree with me here um yeah and if you chase women you know what i mean there's a bunch of people who in, in many different contexts, it leads, leads straight to the grave. You know what I mean? If you have like 100 partners, 200 partners and stuff like that, there's like you open the door for like uh, STDs and stuff like that. And um, not so much that, but you're spending so much time and energy 
chasing a drug high, chasing the dragon. And in what other context does uh, chasing drugs ever grow you wealth? You know what I mean? You're usually getting money so you can immediately dump it into your habit and then um, destroying your wealth because you want to, you just want to maintain that um, emotional dopamine uh, intoxicated state. So like metaphorically, I feel like this is speaking a lot more metaphorically, but it is a little bit literal at the same time because it says her paths wander aimlessly, but she does not know it because, so it's like saying like metaphorically adultery as a spirit or as like a, um, mode of being is going to kill you and take away all your money uh, at the same time. So then let's just hop to verse seven here. Now, my sons, listen to me. Do not turn aside from what I say. Keep to a path far from her. Do not go near the door of her house, lest you lose your lest you lose your honor to others, and your dignity and your dignity to one who is cruel. So I want to say here too, like about masturbation, especially like if masturbation is that bad, how come you don't talk to people about it? You know, what I mean, why doesn't coming up in conversation? Why don't you just like, um, especially I mean, like I speak here because like honor, okay? So like honor. Like your respect, your respect to the uh, society and most like of the culture. And that could change. Um, I don't see it being very good monetarily for the culture if it becomes a normal place of family conversation for everybody to share their favorite porn and hentai they just watched with the family. Or what he thought that they sent all their money to so that they could get her to say, oh, wow, senpai or something like that. I'm sorry. I know I'm getting a little graphic here, but I'm just trying to like, you know, I'm just trying to uh, hit my point home. Um I feel like adultery is a big problem and this is uh and I'm not okay okay so that's good to talk about too. I'm not looking down at anybody say doing this because like my I heard a saying every saint has a past and every sinner has a future and that that really resonated with me and it allowed me to really just keep pressing forward with the type of stuff because like my past I'll share a little bit of it right now is that like the reason why this is so um Maybe I'm like more fixated on this type of stuff more than other stuff is that like I consumed my first piece of pornography when I was in fifth grade and it led for a lifelong addiction until about seven years ago when I decided to take my Christianity seriously. And then I met my girlfriend and then I had a long struggle ahead, but had gotten to the point now where I would say it's shameful now to me to feel that way. Or have, have I have I have such an insurmountable amount of shame of the way I used to be, um, and my life is nothing but better ever since I've like fought against it and defeated it. Not me personally, but you know, like uh, you know, twelve steps, not twelve steps, but you know, Jesus leaning on Christianity and stuff like that. Personally, that's just my personal. I'm not trying to push my religion on you or nothing. I'm just saying, like personally, though, like pornography has done things to me that I can't. I feel like I'll never be able to undo. And I wish I could take it all back. But I don't want to like get too hung up on myself here. But uh, it was really, really, really bad. It wasn't like a normal, from what I've seen other people, their pornography, whatever. Mine was a really bad case in particular. Um, yeah. Like the amount I was consuming and shit. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I felt a massive amount of honor destroyed because of that. Like no, nobody could ever tell me I had no self-respect. I had no, um, nothing. Um, people could tell me good job or anything or like whatever I could do good at stuff, but it, ne it never mattered because I had no, I knew just something inside of me. It just felt wrong. So I had no honor. Uh, and your dignity to who is cruel, less strangers feast on your wealth and your toil enrich the house of another. At the end of your life, you will groan when your flesh and body are spent. You will say, how I hated discipline, how my, hate, my heart spurned correction. I would not obey my teachers to or turn my ear to my instructors, instructors, and I was soon in serious trouble. In the assembly of God's people. Okay. So, I mean, like, so how does this tie to wealth? I mean, what I'm trying to say here, what, the reason why this all ties to wealth, though, I just want to comment on again before we get too far. I know I've kind of, like, veered off quite quickly, is, like, put... So it's telling you all these things. Does any of this act like any of these like um, roots like uh, are they going to produce any wealth whatsoever? You know what I mean? Like are like it's 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 showing it's it's uh, painting the picture about how it's going to suck all of your wealth away, even if you try to store some up, that it's going to be gone. So pursuing these types of like this like 
a lot of building wealth has uh, what to avoid and what not to do. More, and it is just as important to know what not to do as it is to do to know what to do. Because we all kind of know what to do to grow wealth, but a lot of people tend to not know what not to do. So you fall into the traps of things that take your wealth away, and that's like this is very important, and why proverbs this is very important to pay attention to. Um, anyway. Verse 15, drink water from your own cistern, running water from your own well. So it means like maintain your own relationship, stay inside your own relationship. Like the drug is the same, regardless if it's in your relationship or somebody else, like at the lizard brain level, should your springs overflow in the streets, should your streams water in public squares? And that's what it's saying. Like if you go to try to have sex with everybody who has a pulse, your, your internal spring, it'll go into the water. Like any water that goes into a street is going to just dissipate and evaporate into nothing. Like uh, if you are a well, your body is a well, your, your, your spirit or whatever. And if, when you try to stretch yourself out too much, then it's really hard for you to like grow any base because you don't have like a, um, if you're more grounded and centered, then it's easier to grow from there. Um, let them be yours alone, never to be shared with strangers. May your fountain be blessed and may you rejoice in the wife of your youth, a loving doe, a graceful deer. May her... <laughs> Breast satisfy you always. <laughs> May you ever be intoxicated with love. Why, my son, be intoxicated with another man's wife? Why embrace the bosom of a wayward woman? Um, wayward means, like, obnoxious. And, like, right, all this, all, I don't know. I feel like I don't need to defend this um, or make a point for it or really to interpret it. I feel like this is all kind of, like, whatever. Um, it's saying, like, Find that girl. I mean, I say this in a bunch of other videos. This is why it's super important for you to decide if you want this type of life. Like, do you want a relationship or like you, it is this or the other, like you can't just like go live, um, the other life and then come back and expect the, the monogamous relationship to be there because there's like so many implications of living a, uh, extremely like anything you do is going to cause consequences down the line. And like this, this type of, Relationships are like one of the hardest things that you'll ever have to do. But if you can figure a relationship out, that is going to be one of the core principles of you. One of the core principles for you to build wealth. And I can explain that more maybe in another video, but like that is true. Um, and it's saying here, like. It's going to it's going to be worth it, bro. Like, you know what I mean? Like it's going to be worth your time. Um for your ways are in full view of the Lord, and he examines all your paths. You can say that's karma or whatever, or your own conscience. Like, you, even if God doesn't exist in your world, you're still watching yourself. You know what I'm saying? So, like, you can try to scam everybody else, but you can't scam yourself. And if you do the things to get yourself to a point where you feel like you can scam yourself, you're not a person anymore. Uh, you destroy, like, you have to destroy parts of yourself, to take away parts of your humanity for you to, like, live with that type of shit. So it's not worth it. I mean, like... To do something that doesn't even get you wealth in the first place, you have to destroy parts of yourself. So then, you know what I mean? Like, does that not, how does that not sound like you're going to, how does it sound like that's going to help you build wealth? Um, people, yeah, whatever. Um, yeah. So the evil deeds of wicked men are wicked and snare them. The cords of their sins hold them fast. For the lack of discipline, they will die led astray by their own great folly, which is true. I mean, for the lack of discipline, discipline meaning like, let's just look that up quick. I don't know if I just spell it. There we go. Um, the practice of training people to obey rules or a code of behavior using punishment to correct disobedience. A branch of knowledge, typically one studied in higher education. Train to obey rules or a code of behavior using punishment to correct. Yeah, I mean, that sounds pretty mean, but like, whatever. Um, discipline. Acting in accordance to a certain, like, following rule. It's essentially, discipline is like training to follow rules. And yeah, that sounds like it could be super oppressive and stuff, but if life is a game or a culmination of a bunch of games, then you and your ability to practice uh, abilities to learn rules and follow them to get certain outcomes, because all rules are meant for an outcome, an objective, and the better you are at following rules means you can play the games that give you the types of objectives that you want to know. So anyway, that that that, that, that is... Uh, it for this episode of how to grow wealth i hope you guys enjoyed it and i will catch you in the next little reading tomorrow and my little talk yeah see ya bye